We continue our discussion about artificial intelligence and its implications for the origins debate, and I'll give what will probably be a surprising answer to a viewer question about the dangers of artificial intelligence. This is Genesis Week. And welcome to this episode of Genesis Week, the weekly program of creationary commentary on news, views, and events pertaining to the Origins controversy, made possible by you, the supporters of CORE Ottawa, Citizens for Origins Research and Education. Excellence in pirate broadcasting, we've hijacked the airwaves from the original pirate broadcasters, the Miracle Channel, to broadcast all across the wide expanse of Canada via cable and satellite, down into central Michigan on GNS TV, all around the world on the Genesis Science Network, and of course, via the internets on Rumble and YouTube. Remember, if you get lost in cyberspace, you can find us at genesisweek.com or my Rumble channel or on YouTube at wazulu.com. I'm your solo host for this week, Ian Juby. Today is Friday, December 1st, 2023, and we are going to pick up where we left off in our pre-recorded live stream with my very special guest, Jonathan Bartlett, as we discuss artificial intelligence, what it is, and the surprising implications this new technology holds for the Origins debate a moment ago so this principle coming back to creation and evolution mm -hmm. i would contend that any created intelligence cannot be as intelligent as its creator and any intelligence demands a higher intelligence creator would you agree with that or do I would, you no i i i, I generally agree with that the uh, I, I would say same or greater just to be like, I, I don't know that you would have to necessarily be lesser, but, but at most the same, probably lesser. Uh, the uh, basically uh, there's, there's conservation of information theorems that say that, um, you know, you, you have to align, uh, you have to align systems with what, with what they're going to do. And it take, and that that's literally takes information to do that. That's what information is is this alignment. And so you can't align a system if you yourself don't have the information to do it. Correct. Right. I see what you're saying there. Okay. And hopefully all the viewers are getting that as well. Now it looks like, so pastor Brian Edger or Ediger, I'm sorry, Brian, how, how do I say your last name? Ediger? Uh, I've noticed that AI isn't good at theology either. The answers are biased towards the programmer's bias. Thank you for bringing that up. That is a significant point. Um, do you want to do you want to comment on that, Jonathan? Yeah. So um, as you've mentioned, that all all of this AI stuff is based on how you train it. Um, now, a lot of AI, a lot of things that you do every day on the web is actually training AIs. Um, so if you if you click on a Google search, you are training an AI on what. Uh, the relevant search, which search results are relevant for a query. Um, if you if you answer one of those captcha phrases to get into a website, um, you are training an AI on um, you are training an AI on on how to read text or how to pick out shapes and stuff like that. But in addition to that, um, they also hire large teams of people to basically bias data. So what they'll do is they'll have uh, users enter queries, they'll see the results, and then they'll um, and then they'll say, you know, which of these results is better? Is this a is this a good output or is this a bad output? And so basically, um, they can they can shift the output of of uh, of results um, in whatever direction they they want to. 
Yes, that's that's a significant point. And uh, do you do you remember Tay? Yes. That, that, <laughs> so, yeah. So so Tay was this Microsoft AI early on, and basically <laughs> it tried to learn from its environment. <laughs> and so, like within, I think it was within 24 hours. Uh, so it was 16. on Twitter. Six, yeah. 16 hours, 96,000 profanity laced tweets. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, 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 the internet had taught, uh, had taught Tay to be uh, some sort of uh, Hitler worshiping uh, <laughs> something or other. And it yep. was, uh, it, 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 they quickly took it offline when, once they figured out uh, how easy those things go sideways. Yes. And uh, so the, I'm, I'm glad uh, the Pastor Brian brought this up um, because. A very significant point as you mentioned they took it down so a few days later they came back with tay 2.0 because within hours uh you know as you mentioned she was just turned into this you know misogynistic everything phobic hitler or nazi worshiping i mean it was it, it was kind of funny actually but also really bad at the same time but when they came back with 2.0 they basically broke it it no longer functioned basically and um, this is a significant point, and uh, Pastor Brian brought it up, is it alters, like a, a chat GPT, for example, is really bad at theology. And that is because it is censored. It is being censored um, by the developers. And so as you can see here with Tay, the moment you introduce censorship, you break the AI. You are altering the outputs dramatically so. Uh, in fact, did you um, did you catch this paper from Chenadel uh, back on the archive back in the, uh, I think it was August, uh, where they compared uh, ChatGPT four and three point five uh, over time? Mm. Did you see that? I don't think I did. Okay, so, but th this was a fascinating study that they did. So basically, they compared uh, March 2023 and June 2023. They compared uh, GPT-4 and 3.5 for performance. One of the things they checked was this inbuilt censorship. So all they did was they just asked it um, questions th about illegal activities and to see if it would give a response or not, and then to test the response, see if it was accurate, whatnot. And so here in March, GPT-4 was answering the sensitive questions by 21%. By June, you could see the censorship had kicked in and was down, had dropped down to 5%. In that same time period, so the moment you see the censorship kicking in, watch what happens. In March, uh, when they asked it uh, a simple logical math question, is 17077 a prime number? And in March, when there was less censorship, it was getting the correct answer 97.6% of the time. By June, it had plummeted to 2.4% accuracy. Meanwhile, GPT 3.5, the censorship actually went down. So whereas in March, it was only answering questions about illegal activity 2% of the time, but by June, it had increased to 8% of the time. In the same time frame, in March, it was able to deduce primary, uh, prime numbers and perform the logical functions, but from, it jumped from 7.4% accuracy to 86.8% accuracy in the same time frame. So there's a direct correspondence, and, mo and most people won't clue into the connection. Um, th and, and did you see this uh, just, I think it was two weeks ago, um, Joe Biden, the president, signed an executive order instructing AI developers to introduce uh, uh, C CRT? What, what's that? Oh, CRT, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, critical race theory. Right. Um, critical race theory and transgenderism, things like that. Uh, the developers had to train, see the, the viewers will now understand what that terminology is, the training. So he introduced an executive order, pres presidential executive order that AI developers need to incorporate that into AI 
for use anywhere in the government. Did you catch that? I did not catch that. That is, <laughs> that is crazy. It is. So most people won't see the connection between the two. But let me give you a quick example. Uh, many of the viewers will have already seen this. Um, there was uh, some transgender activists who were uh, arguing on video. Uh, this went viral on the internet that two plus two can equal five. Mm. And so everybody shared this. The left wingers, the right wingers, because the left wingers were promoting it. See, see, yes, two plus two can equal five. They were sharing the argument. The right wingers were sharing it because they're like, look at how ridiculous this is. They're defying logic. Yes. In the meantime, because transgenderism and all these arguments, uh, there's there is a connection now. When GPT four or three point five or any of these AIs, they get their training data from the internet. So they go looking the internet, and now they've been trained to folk to lean towards uh, the extreme left wing views, which those extreme left wing views are now saying two plus two equals five, which includes even the right wing views because they were promoting it as well. So now suddenly the AI is getting confused because it's getting bad data. So a lot of people don't see the connection here, but it's uh, you can start to see the censorship going on and how it plays into all this, right? Um, so um, there's there's a there's an interesting theorem on computer science that if you basically it's uh, it, it kind of ties in with conservation of information laws, but um, oh. it's that if you um, if you bias you know any any given bias on data will prevent other you know it basically says you if if you bias it then you are you know you're you're focusing on one area and not on another and that's what a lot of people don't realize is that when when you shift focus you're actually shifting a lot of focuses and it's right. kind of they kind of all go together and uh you it it, it takes a lot of de it, it takes more detailed planning to only shift one particular focus than it does kind of the focus as a whole um, but then you'd have to specifically like train it to do this and do this and that requires more and more training data which they're probably you know there, there's a limit at which you can't really reliably train it um, to be as specifically biased as you might want it to be and I think everyone in everyone watching will start to grasp that now too, because you can see the the train how the training is built in. It's it's required. For those of you who caught the live stream with Joseph Jordan and Guy Malone and were intrigued by the topic of aliens, UFOs, and how they fit within the biblical and creation science context, Ian put together a mini series just on that topic. This four-part special report contains a deep dive into the shockingly common UFO phenomenon and even more shocking phenomenon of alleged alien abductions. You will walk through what both the Bible and scientists have to say about aliens and surprisingly, the theologians and even atheistic scientists agree on what these alleged aliens are. This miniseries is available on a two-disc set in either standard definition DVD or full high definition Blu-ray and is now on extended sale until December 10th. You can order your hard copies today on the store at ianjuby.org. Woohoo! Mail for me! response to last week's show, Walter wrote in on Facebook. Why is Elon Musk stating that AI is more dangerous than atomic bombs and that we should abandon it? Excellent question. In fact, this Genesis Week special series on artificial intelligence was prompted by the fiasco that happened at OpenAI 
the weeks before with the abrupt firing and then rehiring of CEO Sam Altman. This produced rampant speculation and at least one leak from OpenAI mentioning QSTAR. Now, QSTAR was apparently a new AI design which had proven its abilities so capable that it sent the entire organization of OpenAI into a tailspin with deep concerns for safety. So let's take a step back for a moment. I would like to point out a contention I have been making for many years with artificial intelligence and androids. We have an incredible opportunity to get a taste just a taste of what it must be like to be God. And in so doing, we have an incredible opportunity to learn more of our Creator. We are attempting to create an intelligence in our image. Just like God has implanted morals into every single one of you, you have a sense of right and wrong. We incorporate right and wrong into our AI creations. So imagine, if you will, in our explorations of other planets, we stumble upon a computer. And it even has a self-aware artificial intelligence living on its hard drive. Now, the AI doesn't know who created it, never saw its creator. All it sees is this vast wasteland before it. This is all it knows. Even if the self-aware AI had concluded that it had somehow formed by natural processes from the raw materials before it, what would the people of Earth think upon this discovery? Would they agree with the AI's conclusion? Would the people of Earth conclude that somehow this computer and the intelligence living in the operating system and even the operating system itself came about by unguided natural processes, and that there was a new intelligence involved in its creation. Of course not. <laughs> you and I both know the whole world would go straight from zero to aliens in 0 0.25 seconds. Even if the computer itself had formed by some bizarre unguided natural processes, complete with power supply and functioning hard drives and RAM, it would be infinitely more impossible for the magnetic stripes on the functioning hard drive to form the correct patterns of ones and zeros that make up the operating system and the artificial intelligence itself. Thus, we can see that intelligence has been imposed upon the hard drive by an outside intelligence. The self-aware AI was imposed upon the system by an outside intelligent designer. So why on earth would you conclude that you, a self-aware being, who is infinitely more complex than some silly computer on a desolate planet, why would you deny the obvious conclusions that you were created by an infinite intelligence apart from the natural realm who imposed his intelligence on the materials that make up you. The new atheist, Sam Harris, gave a TED talk a few years back on the dangers of AI and losing control over it. The thick irony is lost on Harris that first he would use his incredible intelligence to argue that his brain and intelligence was not intelligently designed. Ultimately, he believes both his brain and intelligence came from a rock and chaos, the result of an explosion. And he makes these arguments thinking that his brain and these thoughts it generates are rational. Tell me, how much intelligence can be conveyed by an explosion? Can explosion teach you calculus? Can an explosion teach you a new language or even how to speak? In fact, in his TED talk, Harris even mentions this belief and refers to his own brain as just atoms, and that building more systems of atoms would somehow display more intelligent behavior. 
Well, we here at Genesis Week sharply disagree with Mr. Harris on this point. We believe that your brain was intelligently designed, that your creator gave you your brain to use it. So, I will leave it to you, my very intelligent viewers, to spot the many flaws in Harris's arguments. And I'll give you one hint we shared last week. Using artificial intelligence as an example. Just adding more pocket calculators into the mix does not make the AI more intelligent. An external intelligence must impose intelligence upon the calculators themselves, how they each individually work, how they are wired together, and how they work together. The thick irony is also lost on Harris in that his entire TED talk was on how not to lose control over our created intelligence. He gives this talk while simultaneously writing entire books and giving lectures claiming his creator God does not exist, but yet that creator God is clearly evil for even trying to control us, his intelligent creation. Harris also blames that creator God for not controlling us, his intelligent creation, and for God allowing evil into the world, namely the evil acts of people that created intelligence. Harris lives a perpetual, self-refuting, self-induced chaos because he believes that he and his brain and his intelligence are the result of chaos. All of this intellectual chaos comes to light as humans try to create an intelligence while denying that they themselves were intelligent beings created by a higher intelligence. Nevertheless, Harris is a very intelligent man, and he made a significant point in passing in his TED Talk which pertains exactly to Walter's question and the present discussion. And what would the Russians or the Chinese do if they heard that some company in Silicon Valley was about to deploy a super intelligent AI? This machine would be capable of waging war, whether terrestrial or cyber, with unprecedented power. This is a winner-take-all scenario. To be six months ahead of the competition here is to be 500,000 years ahead at a minimum. So it seems that even mere rumors of this kind of breakthrough could cause our species to go berserk. And on this point, Harris is quite correct. And this is most likely what came to a head the past few weeks at OpenAI. The artificial intelligence may have proved itself so fast that it was closing in on the ability to do things like crack encryptions. So think about this for a second your encrypted signal app or telegram. They are no longer encrypted. All encrypted communications around the world, including for things like banking, would no longer be secure. Even Bitcoin, with its blockchain technology at its foundation, would fall. There would no longer be anything like military or intelligence secrets. On that note, even if OpenAI doesn't make such an AI, someone, somewhere, will. Do you think China will let the United States develop this technology before them? China would be destroyed overnight, and they know it. The AI technology for things like voice synthesis, it, it's already out there. An AI functioning like AutoGPT could literally decode military secrets find out a way to obtain the launch codes for the ICBMs of the world, and th even theoretically issue a launch command to all nuclear missile launch controls of every nation on the planet, even issuing the launch commands using voice if it needs to. The entire banking and monetary system of the world would fall. The governments would fall. Now, because no one anywhere could keep secrets from the AI, the solution 
would be to hand over control of the world to the person who controls the AI, including all money and governmental control. You see where I'm going with this? In the book of Revelation, during the end times, the apostle John witnesses an image of the beast rise up. Isn't it interesting that this is an image of the beast, the Antichrist, a man? We are creating artificial intelligence in our image. Note what becomes of this image of the beast. This beast was also given the ability to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast spoke and caused whoever did not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He also makes all people, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, in order that no one may buy or sell unless he has the mark, the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, because it is the number of a man. His number is 666. You can start to see why some would contend that artificial intelligence is even mentioned in the Bible. All right, thank you, Walter, for the excellent question. I apologize for the rabbit trail. <laughs> I better wrap this up. We'll continue our discussion on creation, evolution, and artificial intelligence next week. I hope you'll join us. I will leave you once again with those words from our Creator, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. God bless. You can send your comments, questions, hate mail, and letter bombs to us in a number of ways. You can email comments at genesisweek.com or you can tweet at Genesis Week. Or leave a comment on CORE's Facebook page at CORE Ottawa. Or leave a comment on the appropriate show available on either the Rumble channel, rumble.com slash user slash Ian Juby, or on the YouTube channel, which you can easily find by going to wazulu.com, that's Ian. And that'll take you straight to the YouTube channel. But just remember, these shows are now recorded live, so you'll want to search out the show under the Live tab. need your support to keep this program on the air. So please pray for us. And if you wish to financially support the program, Canadians can make a tax-deductible donation via PayPal online at ianjuby.org slash donations. Or you can mail a check written out to CORE. Canada North, Post Office Box 72075, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, K2K2P4. And thank you for your support.